Hey friends, in this video, I plan on breaking down the top 10 issues that beginners experience when working with hosting providers and with WordPress to build their website. I'm gonna be breaking down this video into five hosting issues and five WordPress issues that I see a lot of beginners dealing with. And I hope that if you're watching this video, it will help you avoid any of these problems and allow you to build your website with ease. So let's go ahead and get right into it. We're gonna start with the hosting issues first, and then second, we'll move into the WordPress issues. Okay, so the first issue that I see a lot of beginners dealing with when building a website is determining whether or not they actually need web hosting and what's the best option for that. Let me be as simple and clear as possible for you. Yes, you absolutely need web hosting in order to have your website online. Otherwise it's offline and no one's gonna be able to see it. Web hosting is essentially renting space on a server that's connected to the internet. Now, if I had to explain the internet in one sentence as simply as possible, I would just say that it's a series of servers that are connected around the world. That's about it. So you want your website to be on one of those servers so that people can actually see it. Now here on the channel, we always recommend Hostinger because it's the absolute best choice when it comes to hosting, simply because of the amount of services that they provide for the amazing affordable price. Now I've got a video on the channel where I break down how to choose the right hosting plan for you. And I explain what all of the different services are when you're looking at a pricing table. I'll leave a link down in the description to that video so that you guys can go and check it out whenever you guys want. But in the meantime, if you're curious on how to get started signing up for a hosting plan, let me show you guys how to do that with Hostinger right now. Go to createaprowebsite.com slash Hostinger, and it'll take you to a special co-branded landing page that we have with them. If you scroll down, you'll see three different options that they offer for hosting. And on this channel, I always recommend the premium hosting plan for beginners because of a few key points, specifically the free SSL and the free domain name that you get included with the package. Choose the period at which you would like to pay and then fill out your payment information. You'll notice the coupon code create a pro website is taking off around $100 from your bill. After that, you can click on create new website, then select WordPress as your platform, create an admin account with WordPress, and then finally claim your free domain name that you get included with the premium hosting package. After that, it's as easy as clicking edit your website and you'll be redirected directly to your WordPress dashboard. It's literally that simple to get your website up and running. Now, I put out tutorials almost every other week on how to build a website from start to finish using WordPress. So you guys can check out any of the other tutorials on my channel and I go through the same process every time. Something I see beginners struggle with all of the time is justifying the purchase of web hosting. And I understand that everyone is looking for the most amount of value for the cheapest price possible. And so that begs the question, can you get hosting for free? And my answer is yes, you can get free hosting, but it comes with a lot of limitations. Like, you won't be able to get your own custom domain name. It'll be something like yourwebsite.wix.com or .squarespace.com or whoever else is editing the website, or it might even be a random string of numbers and letters that you don't even get to choose. You also can't upload new themes onto your website in order to customize your site exactly the way you want. You also can't upload plugins to the website to increase functionality. And you also can't monetize your website with ads in order to make money from it. Additionally, because you're not paying for it, your website could be deleted at any time because you don't technically own it. It's also incredibly difficult to get any kind of reliable tech support with a free website because you're not paying for it, so why would they help you fix a problem? So for these reasons, I always recommend purchasing your web hosting because it places you in control and guarantees a good experience. Now, something I see beginners ask all of the time is what is shared hosting and why am I signed up for it? And there's nothing wrong with using shared hosting. Lots of people use it and they see it on their hosting plan and they think, am I sharing my website with someone else? And that's definitely not the case. You own your portion of the server that you're paying for, but servers have a lot of storage space. So you're only taking up a portion of the same server. Now, other people on the same server are renting space the same as you. And it can be crazy expensive trying to attain your own personal server for your website. So it's much more affordable to have a small or medium sized website on a shared hosting plan and you're sharing the server space with other people that way it's a lot more affordable. The only downside to shared hosting is your bandwidth and hosting providers will state in the terms of service that you have unlimited bandwidth, but that technically means unlimited bandwidth within reason. They're expecting that your website is gonna operate within the bandwidth of a normal small to medium website and that way you're not slowing down other people's websites that are on the same server. Basically, they're asking you to be fair and share the resources and there's absolutely nothing wrong with using shared web hosting and tons of people use it to save money on their website fully knowing that they're never gonna cap out on the bandwidth. 
Another issue that I see a lot of beginners struggle with when they're building their first website is understanding the difference between the H panel or C panel and WordPress. And the reason I say H panel or C panel is because most people call it a C panel, but hosting or calls it an H panel. Remember when I talked about web hosting and how it's basically renting space on a server that's connected to the internet? Well, a C panel is a web hosting control panel that allows you to manage your website and server settings through a graphical user interface, rather than trying to code changes into your server, which would be very difficult. You can change certain aspects of your website, like creating and maintaining email accounts. You can upload files, manage databases, download SSL certificates, and much more. Setting up multiple domains and subdomains is done through the cPanel or hPanel, and configuring security settings is also done here. Now, WordPress, on the other hand, is a content management system that allows you to create, manage, and publish digital content, such as blog posts, web pages, images, videos, without needing to know any programming. And the whole key thing here is not needing any programming on both ends. So to put it simply, think about it this way. Your cPanel allows you to manage your server settings, which is where your website is located. But WordPress allows you to manage the content that's inside your website, like the pictures, images, text, blog posts, etc. And one last thing before I move on to the next issue, there's another cool thing about your HPanel. If you ever find yourself locked out of your WordPress backend, you can always use the hosting account to access your WordPress backend. And this is always a great safety net as long as you don't forget the password to your hosting account as well. So I also see this question asked a lot, and I'm glad that I'm finally able to address it. Can I build my website in the hosting provider's website builder and then transfer it to another hosting provider later on? Unfortunately, no. If you build your website in one software and you move it to another, no matter what, you're gonna have to rebuild it in the new location, plain and simple. Now, I would say that this is another plus of building your website with Elementor and WordPress first. If you build your website with Elementor and WordPress, which are basically third party from your hosting provider, then if you switch hosting providers and you switch domain names or whatever you switch, all you have to do is re-download Elementor and WordPress onto your new domain name and then just migrate your website over and you don't have to redesign it. I hope this makes things a bit more clear for you because when it comes to hosting providers, everyone's software is different, so it would be impossible for you to transfer your website over and keep it looking exactly the same way, unless you completely rebuild it at the new location, of course. So those are the top five hosting issues that I see beginners dealing with. Now it's time to move into the WordPress issues that I see people dealing with. The first problem that I wanna talk about that I see a lot of beginners trying to tackle when using WordPress is understanding the difference between the theme customizer and the page builder. Think of your website like it's a sandwich. The top and bottom bread is your header and the footer. And then all of the fixings in the middle is just the content on your website. The theme customizer is what edits the top and bottom bread of your sandwich, while your page builder is what usually builds the middle of your website, which I always recommend using Elementor as the page builder, but that's what we use here on the channel. It's important to make the distinction that the customizer is technically the theme customizer because it's tied to your WordPress theme. If you download a different WordPress theme, then your customizer is gonna look completely different. Different themes have different customization options. So every time you download a different theme, you'll notice that the customizer looks completely different. Now here on the channel, I always recommend using Astra theme because it pairs very well with starter templates plugin that I use in almost all of my tutorials. It also has an incredible amount of customization control given that it is a free theme. Most free WordPress themes don't actually allow all of the things that Astra does. So that's why I always recommend it. So another issue that I see beginner web designers struggling with is understanding a menu versus the site's navigation. And it's not necessarily that there's a difference between a menu and the site's navigation. Rather, you just use the menu at the top of the website as the navigation for the website. You can build multiple menus on your website and you can have the main navigation menu in the top right, which is usually displayed there. But you can also create secondary menus for different places on your website, like in the footer. Some menus might only display pages in the footer, like the policy, the terms of service, and all of those things, while the navigation menu in the top right corner of the website guides you to different main pages of the website, like the home, about, contact, and you guys get the idea. At the end of the day, the navigation of your website is usually in the form of a menu in the top right corner of your header but that's just one of many menus that you might have on your website, if that makes sense. So here's another issue that I see a lot of beginners ask often is, what's the difference between hiding a page or making it offline or unpublishing the page on your WordPress website? And there's a few different options that you have when it comes to removing a page from your website. You can make it private, 
which is what I assume most people mean when they say hiding it. Now, making it private just means that only the site admin and editors can see that page. It's basically not live on your website. If someone were to miraculously come across the URL to that specific page that you made private, they would just see a web page that says that this page is hidden or private. You can also make a specific page on your website password protected, which just means that if anyone ever got to that link of that specific page, that they would have to enter in a password to see it just like this. And then you can also change the page's publishing status from published to draft if you want to do that as well. That means it's not published on your website anywhere. So no one can access it whether they have a link or not. But it's also not been deleted either. So you're still able to make changes and edit the page before republishing it again. And the reason that I mentioned this a lot about whether someone has the link to that page is because even if you don't have a single button on your web page or homepage anywhere that links to this page, theoretically, if someone had the URL to that page for some random reason, they could still access it unless you block it in some way, like making it private or password protected or making it a draft. Also on somewhat of a related note, if you ever notice that your URLs look like garbage, like this for example, there's a way to fix that where every single page is labeled with a clean URL. From your WordPress dashboard, just go to the settings and click on permalinks and switch it from plain to post name. This is what's gonna make your URLs look nice and pretty. Another issue that I see a lot of beginners running into is trying to find out if they can make changes to their website or updates without it being live on their website yet. And this is really easy to do. There's two ways that you can make this happen. The first would be referring to the issue that we just talked about, which was hiding or password protecting a page. You could edit the page and then add password protection to it, or you could set it as a draft while you're making changes to the website. And then you can always preview the page as if it were online while you're making the changes to it in draft mode. So it's essentially the same thing as testing it out before you actually make it live. Another way that you could do this is always just building your website offline first. That way no one has access to it. And then when you're done, you can just migrate the entire website to a domain name when you're ready. Now, the first way that I talk about just hiding a page and then turning it into draft mode is much easier than building an entire website offline. So that's what I would recommend first. The last thing that I wanna talk about today, which is kind of an all encompassing issue that beginners have is wondering who do they turn to when they have a problem? And this is obviously really important to talk about because it's gonna gauge how you're gonna fix pretty much all of your problems in the future. First of all, it's important to make the distinction between a problem on the server side of your website or on the content side of your website. For instance, if I'm having trouble with a database error or an SSL certificate error, or my website gets suspended or something like that, it's probably gonna be a problem with my hosting provider. And I should reach out to technical support with them so that they can figure out what the problem is. If on the other hand, I'm having issues with a video not popping up on my website or an image not popping up or some kind of a visual error on my website, it's probably gonna be an issue with WordPress or any of the numerous plugins that I have installed on my website. Now, the bright side about the more difficult problems on the server side of your website, like having database errors or things like that, is all you have to do is contact tech support with your hosting provider and they'll essentially handle it for you. When it comes to appearance problems on your website and problems with Elementor or WordPress or any of the plugins that you have, you usually have to fix those problems on your own. But I would say that you could definitely try reaching out to whoever you need to, depending on what's wrong. If you find out that one of the plugins isn't working properly on your website, Website, then you're more than welcome to try and reach out to the developer of the plugin to ask for assistance. But if there's one thing I know to be true, there's usually two main sources of problems on anyone's website, and it's gotta be updates and caching issues. So before you go and start scouring the internet for answers to why your website's not working, check if it's up to date first and make sure that all of your plugins are updated and all of your themes are updated on your WordPress dashboard. There's an update icon that you can click on right here to check if you're all up to date or not. Usually an out of date plugin is the reason that your website crashed or that an image isn't popping up or anything like that. After that, if you're still having problems, go ahead and double check that you don't have a previously cached version of your website downloaded on your computer that's causing problems. You can clear your browsing history on your web browser and also your browser cache, which is the most important part, and see if this fixes the problem. Once you do those two things, then I would start doing your own research to figure out what the problem is and see if anyone else out there is having the same issue or if you can find a YouTube video on the problem or something like that. Thankfully, that's what my channel is here for. So these are some of the most asked questions that I get with WordPress and hosting. What do you think? Did we cover your issue in the video? Let me know down in the comment section if you have any other questions and I'll be sure to answer them or maybe just make a part two of this video. We'll see if I get enough. And there actually is a whole other topic that web designers seem to really struggle with and that's exactly what I cover in this video right here. I reveal the ugly truth of why your website may be boring.
and exactly how to fix it. So I'd check it out unless you want to be like some of these boring outdated websites in this video. I'll see you there.